Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Pancast. Today we welcome back Faze Azmi, who is part of the threat support team. Faze joined us in an episode previously that discusses antivirus and an overview of threat logs. Today he's back for more related to this topic. Welcome back, Faze. Can you give us a quick recap of the previous episode? Thanks, John. To recap on the previous episode, our AB capabilities protect users from downloading and uploading malicious files, software, office documents, and etc. The files are being forwarded and inspected by Wildfire that leads to the creation of an AB signature once malicious verdict is determined. The signatures, which is a byte string pattern downloaded and installed through Palo Alto Network's AB content updates or retrieved via the Wildfire package periodically. We discussed the differences of the thread locks and we reviewed the concept of true positive, false positive, and signature collision and how to approach each scenarios. Thanks, Faze. So what are we talking about today? As most probably already know, our app and thread dynamic updates include the new and modified app IDs, which is the application portion. The thread portion, however, includes the new and modified thread signatures that provide protection through our vulnerability and anti-spyware profiles. As the name suggests, the vulnerability profiles include protection for your vulnerable system and application. It includes exploit patterns and signatures, for example, the famous vulnerabilities such as Apache Log4j or Microsoft Outlook Privilege Escalation CVE 2023-23397. Distinctively, there are two portions in the anti-spyware profile configuration. One, the signatures that are available to protect against malicious malware covert channels and command and control traffic pattern or payload. Another is the specific to DNS protocol, configurable under DNS policy tabs. The DNS policy settings perhaps is a discussion for the next episode. We will explore the differences in the DNS content versus DNS security and how it works. That would be interesting. Circling back on vulnerability and anti-spyware protection, do our customers need to have decryption enabled to be able to protect vulnerable applications and systems as well as detecting covert channels? That's a great question. We receive this question often. Most of the exploit happens due to lack of visibility where the threat actor is able to establish a foothold in the network by exploiting a vulnerable system. Hence, it is important to have decryption enabled. Once the traffic payload matches the signature, the firewall is able to detect and the action defined in the security profile is taken, whether to reset, drop, or allow such traffic. Thanks, Faze. Let's say as a firewall administrator, I often see threat logs. Maybe it is a specific vulnerability, threat ID, or maybe brute force protection. When I check the source IP address and the destination IP address, I consider them as trusted devices. Does that mean there was an attempt to exploit the system? Another good question, John. Similarly, when we discussed on the AV logs in the previous episode, we need to have a further understanding of the network and the traffic pattern. Although the source and destination may be trusted, our signatures are pattern-based with respect to the vulnerability and exploit payload. There could be a possibility of it being either false positive or true positive. What we often advise our customers is to perform packet capture and review the payload. Once that is done, you may need to work closely with the application owner to understand if the request or response is expected. In the event of it being a false positive, we need to improve on our signature. If that's the case, please open a support ticket with Palo Alto Tech and attach the packet captures, traffic logs, and the track logs. Otherwise, in the event of true positive, the payload may be matching a known exploit. For example, a Confluence server that is vulnerable to object graph navigation language CVE 2022-26134 which allows non-authenticated attacker to execute code. With the packet capture, you can see the payload if it's matching publicly available POC, proof of concept, regardless of where the traffic originated, whether internally, externally, or even a trusted IP address, it's worth investigating. Take note, IP address can be spoofed to trick administrator that it could be coming from a trusted network. 
Does the same approach apply to anti-spyware threat IDs as well? Where can I find more information related to the signatures? Yes, the same approach applies. Packet capture is required to understand the traffic payload. If the traffic is being encrypted, we can either enable decryption mirroring or enable the extended thread capture on the firewall. If you are not aware, decryption mirroring requires you to activate it through customer support portal without any additional cost. The information on all the signatures is available in our thread vault by searching by the thread ID, thread name, or the CVE number. Great information. Thank you, Faze. So to wrap up, what are the key takeaways? It is important to understand and validate the traffic payload to determine if it's true positive or false positive. Packet capture for the relevant traffic can be helpful in understanding that. If the packet is encrypted, enable extended trap capture or decryption mirroring. Thanks again, Faze. That was a very informative session. Pancasters, as always, for more information related to Pancast, the written transcript and reference links, head to live.paloaltonetworks.com. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned as well, as we will have Faze back in the near future to discuss other types of threat logs. Bye for now.